What a great session that was, I think, the speakers so far. So this is a policy session. We've had the power of cross-national comparisons uh, from Ron. We've had uh, personal stories and a real uh, uh, call for change from Helen. And then the power of the very impressive data and the almost natural experiment that is Sweden that we can all learn from. I'm going to turn now to talk about another priority group hugely important, which is to do with smoking and vaping in pregnancy, try and set out for you what we know and what we don't know, and what some of the future research priorities are. So these are my disclosures. So I'm going to give you a bit of context on smoking and pregnancy, which most of you will be familiar with, and then I'm going to talk about nicotine in pregnancy. This meeting is about nicotine, so we'll focus on that. And then the, tell you about the group that I chair in the UK that's trying to uh, progress reducing our smoking and pregnancy rates. Uh, quickly run through what existing research we have on e-cigarettes in pregnancy, which is very limited, and then tell you about a trial that we're about to start, and then try and, um, I suppose, promote uh, or let you know about some very basic publications we have from the challenge group, uh, the, the group that I mentioned earlier, coordinated by Ash and Deborah is here, um, and hopefully you might find those useful in your own country. We are translating them at the moment into multiple different languages. So I think you're all aware of the risks of smoking in pregnancy. Helen talked about the stigmatization of people with chronic mental health conditions. Pregnant women who smoke are a hugely stigmatized group. Pregnant women universally, despite the fact that they find smoking beneficial and enjoyable perhaps before they're pregnant and, and still smoke to cope, experience a significant degree of stigma. But at the same time as that, they're already, or they are also experiencing harm and there are severe outcomes for the infant. So in the UK, for example, we have over 2,000 premature deaths, uh, births a year from smoking pregnancy. We have 5,000 miscarriages, and smoking pregnancy is the leading preventable cause of perinatal deaths. So it has significant health outcomes for both the mother and the infant. But it's not necessarily about the nicotine. When we look at the biological mechanisms for how smoking might harm pregnant women and their infants, we know that uh, nicotine is liquid, uh, lipid soluble. It easily crosses the biological membranes. And you can actually identify cotinine, a nicotine metabolite, in fetal circulation around seven weeks. So it's, it's uh, detectable very early on. And we also know that how much the woman smokes. So cotinine levels are closely correlated between the mother and the infant or the baby. So how much a woman smokes also influences how much nicotine and the other toxins that the infant receives. So we know particularly heavy smoking in pregnancy can have very severe outcomes for the baby. But it's not the nicotine that is causing the harm. Uh, we do hear, and, and we had reported recently in, in reports like the Surgeon General's report in the U.S. that emphasize some of the, uh, emphasis, uh, the evidence from rodent models about particular uh, negative outcomes uh, for nicotine use in pregnancy. But in human populations, we do not have evidence that nicotine use alone, separate from tobacco, is harmful in pregnancy. It's really important to emphasize that. It's not understood in many countries. And one of the best pieces of evidence for this is the SNAP trial. And I want to show this because it provides a basis for why we're talking about e-cigarette use in pregnancy actively in the United Kingdom and why we think women should be supported to vape if they find it difficult to stop smoking. And this is the basis for it. So this is the SNAP trial. Um, I think we've got a colleague or two here from Nottingham. This was led by Tim Coleman and Sue Cooper and colleagues. Basically, the SNAP trial was, done, was set up to look at whether nicotine uh, replacement therapy in pregnancy was effective or not, a single product, NRT patch. And what they found, like the US and the, also the French trial that's just reported, is that single product NRT wasn't effective in supporting women to stop smoking. For multiple reasons, nicotine metabolism is quicker in pregnancy, uh, women don't feel comfortable using NRT, they don't use it properly. So that's the main finding of the trial, but the, for me the more interesting finding was on safety. So these are the babies followed up until they're two years old. And what you see here is the survival uh, with no impairment for the infants at two years. And you can see amongst the mothers who'd used nicotine replacement therapy in pregnancy compared with the control group, the placebo group, you can see that actually the infants at two years, there was a slightly higher proportion of those who had survival with no impairment in the NRT group compared to those who used placebo. And this provides the basis for us to say that nicotine replacement therapy, along with the other evidence we have, is safe 
to use in pregnancy. Might not work very well, which is important, but it's safe. So on the basis of that, we prescribe it widely in pregnancy, and we also prescribe combination therapies in more than one product, which is the focus of the current trial we're doing, seeing whether that works better for women. However, a lot of pregnant women don't like NRT, they don't want to use it, and they don't find it helpful. So that's the backdrop. So what do we do in that? Uh, on that basis. So this is where we are in the UK. I think most of you have seen this, our public health consensus statement, making clear that all the evidence suggests that e-cigarettes are significantly less harmful than smoking and current smokers should not be discouraged from using them. So our approach to e-cigarette in, in pregnancy is built on this consensus. It's still controversial, but it's built on this. It's also built on our investment in substantial new research and our development of practical guidance for women and health professionals. Because the bottom line is, and I know I often say this, uh, there are babies dying now from smoking in pregnancy. These are preventable deaths, and their mother's deaths are preventable if they continue to smoke. So we, from my perspective, we just can't sit around for another five or eight years until we have the results of more randomized control trials. We need to give some practical advice now based on what we know. So here's what we know and what we don't know. What we do know is that we are able to advise on e-cigarette use in the UK. Again, most of you are familiar with this document, the National Centre for Smoking Cessation and Training Guidelines, where in our services, like Louise Ross's service in Leicester, we're open about e-cigarette use. We provide advice and support. We're positive about e-cigarettes. And in Scotland and England, many services adopt that approach. So with that backdrop, this is the group that we set up in 2011. Uh, it's called the Challenge Group because the public health minister at the time gave us a challenge to try and reduce smoking rates more rapidly in England. Uh, so we set up this group chaired by myself and Francine Bates, who's the director of a, a leading baby charity. And we've met since then and we've produced a number of reports if you're interested on this, in this topic. Here they are, one in 2013, one in 2015. We introduced routine carbon monoxide testing in pregnancy for all women. Everybody gets a CO breath test, doesn't matter if you're smoking or not. I had one with my first, second child. It's routine practice. Um, and then we produced this document on e-cigarettes, which I'll talk about. So what do we know about vaping in pregnancy? Very little at the moment. We only have small surveys and qualitative studies. Um, we know that pregnant women who smoke or who, who used to smoke are using these devices. And in Louise's presentation yesterday, she highlighted that 38% of pregnant women who accessed her service in Leicester who were still smoking um, had chosen to use an electronic cigarette. And in some other services we've surveyed, it's around one in four. So whether we think this is a good idea or not, it's happening. This is what pregnant smokers are doing. They're switching to vaping if they find it difficult to stop. So these are some of the surveys which you can read about. Cheryl Onkins and NTR has just been published. And I'm just going to show you the findings from a small study led by Michael Usher that we've just completed. And this is qualitative research. So amongst 30 uh, women, small sample, um, women who were pregnant or who were recently pregnant and who were smokers or recent ex-smokers, we asked them about their views towards electronic cigarettes, funded by Cancer Research UK. The first thing was, are women motivated to use them? So the reasons they are using them are reasons that are not that different from why other smokers and vapors might use these products. They're a healthier alternative. They want to cut down or stop smoking in pregnancy. They're cheaper in the longer term, which of course is true in the UK, but not in many other European countries or other countries. There are the behavioral aspects that they really value, and they've seen their family and friends using them. So one quote from a woman here, it's healthier for you, so what's healthier for you has got to be healthier for the baby. So those are positive reasons for use. Um, and then secondly, of course, the consumer aspects. So women are really interested in these devices also because of the design. They need to find a product that they think is appealing for them and they're comfortable to use. So most of the women we spoke to, and this is the case in other research we're doing at the moment, prefer smaller, lighter products. They like having something to hold in their hand, but they're really worried about the fact that when they open up the packet, there's no information on pregnancy. So are these products really for them? And then stigma, as I mentioned, um, they're uncomfortable using them in public and maybe view vaping in pregnancy as socially unacceptable. Although, I, just on my way to the conference today, on my way to the airport, sorry, where I live in Edinburgh, I actually saw a heavily pregnant lady walking down the street in my neighborhood vaping, and I thought, great. <laughs> so, you know, it, we, I think we're getting there, but not all women feel that way. 
Um, and then in terms of their experience, obviously using them in similar situations to cigarettes, often they feel they need to use them away from children because they're confused around the evidence on secondhand vaping, but report that many of these devices are not as satisfying as cigarettes. And then they have problems in relation to thinking about harm, just similar to the data that Ron showed in the general population. They're unclear on, on nicotine consumed when using an e-cigarette. They're concerned generally about nicotine use in pregnant because the doctor said they can't even take paracetamol. So, you know, should they be consuming other things? And they have lots and lots of questions about lack of information and advice from professionals on e-cigarettes and pregnancy. We had a question earlier from our colleague from Nottingham about women on online forums desperately wanting to know, what do we know about e-cigarettes and pregnancy? Is it okay for me to use these devices you know, while um, they're still continuing to smoke? Uh, an alternative. So we need more evidence on e-cigarette use in pregnancy, particularly on effectiveness for smoking cessation amongst pregnant women, any impact on the children. So we have two new studies that are underway, just to let you know about those. The first one is we're trying to get an idea, because no other countries have done this, do a nationally repre representative survey that actually shows us how many pregnant smokers, how many pregnant women are vaping. We don't know that nationally. So we've just started that, led by Sue Cooper. And we're about to start a large randomized control trial later this year. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about that in the next slide. But in the meantime, while we wait for those results, we have some information. So this is our PrEP trial. This is taking ages to get ethical approval for. Uh, we got the funding. We were astonished that they would be willing to fund an e-cigarette trial in pregnancy. Um, but now we have to get through some other regulatory hurdles. But we will start at the end of this year. We're going to recruit women across the United Kingdom, some of them on my patch in Scotland, some of them in England. The control group will be 570 women, and what they will be provided with is an initially two-week supply of 15 milligrams, 16-hour uh, NRT patches, and then weekly behavioral support by telephone uh, for four weeks and also slightly longer if they need it. <clears throat> and they can be provided with more NRT after uh, the first two weeks if they choose to use it. And then the intervention group, same sample size, an e-cigarette starter kit. We're using an Inokin Endura, it's 18 milligram, um, and we're offering them tobacco flavor to start, but they can access other flavors if they prefer to use another flavor. That's important to emphasize. Two weeks initial supply of e-liquid instructions and weekly telephone support. And again, following up them over four weeks. So in terms of our primary outcome, it's, it's cotinine, and also we'll be looking at anabazine as well, validated smoking cessation at the end of pregnancy, 10 weeks postpartum, and three months postpartum. And we'll also be looking at birth and maternal outcomes. So we think the, this, this trial will be hugely valuable internationally, but it is going to take us three years to finish even just collecting the data. Um, so great, however, what do we do in the meantime? So this is what we've done. Given that so many women were asking questions, uh, we thought we needed to give advice to health professionals and women themselves. So the first thing we did, and I, I am very grateful to Deborah and, and others for the huge amount of work on this, is we produced a practical document for midwives. And crucially, uh, if you see the, agent, the organizations that have endorsed it here, uh, we also have, crucially, if I can do the thing, the Royal College of Midwives. So very important for us to get the midwives on board to say it's okay for us to give this advice uh, to health professionals. So the way it's set out is about four pages. There's a series of questions, tells them all about electronic cigarettes and what we know in the general population, talks about the harms of smoking in pregnancy, the priority of smoking cessation, and the fact that midwives and others should actively support women who are smoking and want to vape because they're finding it difficult to stop. They should be supported to use an e-cigarette if that's what they choose to do. And I think we have seen some attitude changes, haven't we, Deborah, since we published this amongst health professionals. Jean-Francois Esser asked us for permission to translate it into French, and I know he's disseminated it throughout France. We're now translating it into Bengali, Turkish, um, I can't remember the other languages at the moment, but a whole raft. So if anybody is interested, uh, please do ask us about that. And then the next thing we did was a practical guide for women. So this is a resource which can be handed from a midwife to the woman herself, or women can access it online. Uh, and other places as well. And you can see here, it's just, are e-cigarettes safe to use? So what we know from the RCP report and our other publications, can I use an e-cigarette to help me quit smoking? The answer is yes, and explains why. 
Can I still smoke a bit of tobacco? Um, I know we're having a debate about dual use, et cetera, but in pregnancy, it's pretty clear the answer there is no for the benefits of the mum and the baby. Is it okay for others to use e-cigarettes around me? The answer is yes, in terms of what we know at the moment. Is nicotine harmful for my baby? And the answer is no, from what we know at the moment. So actually, we just tried to be very clear, um, and, and we've had hugely positive feedback uh, from this practical resource. Um, and uh, it supports the detailed briefing for midwives. So, um, just to conclude then, as a lot of gaps in this area, but we are doing a lot of work. We will continue to do so. We know that research funders are very interested in this area. We're working internationally with Cheryl Onkin and others in the US and in, in a number of other countries. And I am very confident that we will see the ev evidence accumulate as time goes on, but in the meantime, we need to do everything we can to support women, to give them a choice, and that's what we're trying to do in the UK. So thank you very much.